Hey, okay, so I wanted to hop on and I wanted to do a really basic 3D foundation application for people who are newer to this product line. Now, if you are a customer of mine and we're color matched to 3D foundation, I will typically recommend something similar to this. So this right here is the compact that I recommend. This is the palette 12. Now, this compact has two layers and usually on the top layer is going to be the 3D foundation with all of your colors. These are all creams. And then on the bottom layer, I will usually recommend you getting a handful of eyeshadows. Now, 3D foundation consists of four colors. You've got a highlight, a contour, a lip and cheek color, and then an illuminator. I technically have it be five colors because I actually recommend two highlight colors. So as you can see in this palette, you've got your main highlight shade. This is like your traditional foundation. You've got a brightening highlight, which is your concealer. You've got a contour, you've got a lip and cheek color, an illuminator, and then I always include a bronzer as well. Now, as far as tools go, I always recommend that you grab two different brushes. This is the blush and bronzer brush, and then this one right here is the detail brush. Now, with the blush and bronzer brush, the nice thing is, is that you can buy it individually, but you can also buy it in a bundle, and it comes with that bronzer that's in that palette. And if you buy it as a bundle, it actually will save you money. I also always recommend that you get the Stay Setting Spray and the Perfector Sponge. So the Stay Setting Spray, it can be used as a primer, and then obviously it can be used as a setting spray. This is going to make it so that your makeup lasts all day long. And then the Perfector Sponge is gonna be used to press in your makeup and pick up any excess product for a really smooth finish. Now, when your makeup first arrives, it's gonna arrive in these cute little tins. All you're gonna do is just pop the lid off and then you're gonna place this tin into your Magnetic Compact. Now, every once in a while, you'll get a tin where the lid is a little bit stuck. If you ever find that that happens, just take a piece of tape, fold over one of the ends, and then just stick it onto the back of the tin, and then you just pull it up, and the tin will pop right open. And then once you have your makeup out of the tin, then you're just gonna go ahead and pop it right inside of your compact. Again, these compacts are magnetic, so it makes it completely customizable. Now, when you first open up your makeup tins, you might notice that there are like some swirls of colors, or I don't know if you can see it, but sometimes there might be some bumps or some texture. That is nothing to be concerned about. So this makeup is made in a heating and cooling process. So after it's been poured into the tins and as it starts to cool off, sometimes it can kind of start to create some textures and designs, but it's nothing to be worried about. It'll go on just as it should. Now, one of the great things about 3D foundation is that each color provides coverage. So you only need to place the colors where you need it on your face and then blend them together. All right, the bangs are pulled back now, which means I mean business. So, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna dive into the actual makeup application. Now, I mentioned how each of these colors provides coverage and that this is just a single layer foundation. So to kind of demonstrate that, we're actually gonna start with the contour, which means you don't have to put any color underneath the contour. You can put the contour directly on your skin. So I'm gonna grab the detail brush and I'm gonna use this flatter, bigger end and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take the very edge of it right here and I'm gonna dip it into my contour shade. Now notice that when I was putting in the contour shade, I was gently tapping it. I was not swiping. Never swipe with this makeup. Always make sure you do that gentle stippling or dabbing motion to pick up the product. If you swipe to pick up the product, you're gonna end up getting way too much product and it's gonna be a huge waste. Instead, if you stipple into the product, it's gonna pick up just the right amount of product to distribute properly onto your face. Now that I've got that product on the end of my brush, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start with the side of my face and where I wanna place this is right directly underneath my cheekbone. So if you kind of feel for your cheekbone, you're gonna go directly underneath that. Now, if you have a hard time figuring out where your cheekbone is, you can start right here at the top of your ear and then work your way down to the outer corner of your mouth. But you don't wanna go all the way down, obviously. You wanna stop about where either the corner of your eye or about where the color of your eye starts. So now taking the end of the brush where I have that color, I am just gonna very gently tap and stipple that product right underneath where my cheekbone is. I'm just gonna press it into place right there. And then I will do the exact same thing 
on this other side. I'm now gonna take the contour and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run it right along my hairline on my forehead. So just run it across and then you can kind of pull it back into the actual hair. And then with whatever contour is left on my brush, I'm just gonna run it right here underneath my jawline just to kind of chisel out and sculpt that area. So you're gonna kind of think about it as like it's a number three on the side of your face. You're gonna go down and around, back up, and then back and along the jawline. Now, there are a couple of other places that you can contour. You can contour your nose and you can contour underneath your lip just to give a little bit more of a full pout. I usually do that a little bit later in the process and keep in mind both of these are extras and not necessary. So we're now gonna kind of switch over to doing the highlight portion. So I'm now gonna switch brushes over to the blush and bronzer brush and I'm gonna start by using the smaller end of it. So I'm gonna dip right here into my main highlight shade. Again, notice that I'm tapping it into the product. I am not swiping. And then I'm just gonna gently start tapping this color into all the areas around the contour, along my chin and around my mouth. I'll also go up on my nose and then up onto the forehead. Now at this point, if there are any areas where you need a little bit more of a full coverage, like a melasma spot or a blemish, you can go in with that main highlight shade again into that area a little bit more concentrated. I often use a brush, but you can also just use your finger. So I'm now gonna switch back to the other brush, the detail brush, and I'm gonna flip it over to that small end, and I'm gonna dip it into this brightening highlight shade. So I'm gonna place that brightening highlight shade right in the inner corner, I'm gonna go down here by the bottom part of my nose and then I'm gonna go right on the outer corner of my eye. So I've got three different spots and then I'm gonna to start to connect the colors together. So now that I've got these three different points, I'm then just gonna take my brush and I'm gonna very gently start to essentially connect the dots between these three different colors to create sort of like a triangular shape underneath my eyes. Now, the reason why I do it this way is because I wanna make sure I have that brightening effect under my eye. You can already see the difference that it makes, but I also wanna make sure I'm not getting a lot of makeup right underneath my eyes where it's the thinnest skin and is more prone to crease. So now that I've got a nice bright under eye, I'm gonna start focusing on my T-zone area. So I'm gonna start by kind of fanning out this brightening highlight right along the central part of my forehead. So I'll put a little bit also on the center of my chin a little bit right above the cupid's bow of my upper lip. And then I usually will just take my pinky and I will run it right along the very center of my nose. Now I mentioned earlier that you can do nose contouring and lip contouring, and this is usually the point that I would do that. So if that's something you're interested in, I will show you how to do that now. So to contour your nose, you're gonna take that detail brush, flip it around to that larger end, and you're gonna stamp it into the contour color just right on this very edge and then you're going to just press it or stamp it onto the side of your nose as well and then you will go in and you will do the exact same thing on the other side and then you'll kind of connect the two right at the bottom and then you will put a little bit right underneath your lower lip and then you'll just flip the brush over and using that small end you'll just very gently go over where you place that color and using a super light hand kind of buff it out so that it's more blended, but make sure you don't blend it away or you'll kind of defeat the purpose. And again, I just wanna reiterate, those are extra steps, they are not necessary, and if it's something that kind of intimidates you, you can just skip that nose contouring altogether. So now I'm gonna go back to my blush and bronzer brush. I was using the smaller, denser end before, but now I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna use this bigger and more fluffy end to do my bronzer. So I'm gonna take the fluffy end and I'm just gonna very gently swirl over the bronzer in light circular motions. And then I'm gonna take that brush and I'm gonna go right above where my contour is and I'm gonna do really light, soft circular motions and I'm just gonna distribute that bronzer right above there to create a really warm glow. And you can see as I'm doing this, that this is kind of helping to blend in that contour more. You can also put the bronzer right on the edges of your forehead. You could go on the center of your chin and the tip of your nose as well. Now, you may have noticed that my neck is significantly lighter than my face. So I'm actually gonna use the bronzer on my neck to also kind of help make it so that my face and my neck match each other. 
So I'm just gonna take a light amount of that bronzer and I'm just gonna go up and down my neck and any of the areas that are visible to help give it a little bit more color. Now I know this might worry you in thinking that maybe some of that makeup will get onto your shirt. I personally have never had any transfer. I always make sure it's a really light amount and I'm just careful around my collar. So now we're gonna do the lip and cheek color. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take that same brush, I'm gonna flip it over to the smaller, denser end again, and then tap it into my lip and cheek color. And then I'm just gonna very gently stipple this color right onto the apples of my cheek, right above the contour. I'm gonna concentrate it here up front and then I'll pull it back just a little bit. Now I've been doing a lot of blending as I've kind of gone along. However, I do want to kind of do a little bit more and I'm gonna use the Perfector sponge to do that. So with the Perfector sponge, you're gonna take it and you're gonna run it underwater and you're gonna wring it out as you're running it under the water and you're gonna make it so that then it kind of doubles in size. Now, once you've got it to where it's doubled in size, you're gonna squeeze out any water in it, but then you're also going to take a towel and you're gonna wring it into the towel and you're gonna do it multiple times until the sponge is no longer wet with excess water. You want the sponge to be damp so that it could double in size, but you do not want it to be wet, otherwise it's gonna remove your makeup. You're now gonna take that sponge and you're going to very gently tap it and press it into your makeup. I like to concentrate under my eyes as well as around my nose. You can also do a little bit more blending in the areas where you have contour or where the different colors meet together. Using the Perfector sponge at the end is gonna press in any product, it's gonna remove any excess product, and it's gonna help to kind of marry the colors together so that way you have a really smooth finish. I'm now gonna set my makeup using the Stay Setting Spray. Now this will come out pretty abruptly, so you just wanna be really intentional and ready for when you spray it. So I'm just gonna hold it out like this, and then I'm gonna go in really quick motions up and down, distributing it all over my face. So now I'll usually just let that dry. I did mention at the beginning of this that you can use this as a primer. This is probably really good for people who have oily skin especially, but you can actually apply this to your face before you apply any makeup and then also use it as an end as a setting spray like I just did. So now that my makeup is all done, I'm just gonna finish off with some illuminator and then I'm gonna put that lip and cheek color on my lips. So I'm just gonna take my finger, I'm gonna dip it right here into this illuminator and then I'm just gonna very gently tap it right onto my cheekbone. So you can just see how pretty that little bit of iridescent glow is. You can also do a little bit down at the center of your nose. You can also do a little bit above the cupid's bow. And then I've got eyeshadow there, but a lot of people will put it right underneath their brow bone. And then same thing with the lip and cheek. I'm just gonna use my finger and then I will just apply it to my lips. And then that's it, that is your entire 3D foundation application. Now I know that this one took a little bit longer because I was kind of stopping and explaining every single step along the way, but once you have this routine down, it'll literally take you minutes to do. Now, if you have any questions about anything that I've done here, please be sure to reach out and ask. And if you have not already been color matched for this foundation, I can't cannot recommend it enough. So make sure you reach out to me and I would love to get you color matched. Now to get color matched, you just have to send me a photo of you in natural lighting without any makeup on. And then I can let you know exactly which colors you need with the 3D foundation. And I will also set up a card with everything that you need to get started. And then if you have any questions in regards to what I do as an artist, I've been with this company since 2017. I absolutely love being a part of this program. And if it's something that you think you might be interested in, definitely be sure to reach out because I'd love to chat with you more about it.